Welcome. Today we're going to be taking a look at Key to the City London. This is a 2-6 player worker placement tile placement city building game where you take the role of borough developers in the city of London. You'll be bidding on locations to add to your borough, upgrading locations, and gaining and utilizing resources trying to become the best borough developer. How do you become the best borough developer and win the game? By having the most victory points at the end of four eras or rounds. Now that we know what the winning condition is, let's take a look at the components set up and how gameplay works in Key to the City London. Now let's take a look at the components. You have hexagon location tiles. Of the hexagon location tiles, you have river tiles. These are the tiles that have the river Thames running through them, as well as eras marked on each tile, and six barge locations. These are used for turn order. Era 1 tiles, these tiles have a green 1 marked on the tile. Era 2 tiles, these have an orange hexagon with a 2 marked on the tile. Era 4 Rootmaster tiles, these are the tiles that have a London bus on the back of the tile. Then you have building tiles and landmark tiles. The landmark tiles have two arrows on the front of the tile representing a double upgrade which corresponds to landmark building markers. In each player color, you have a player screen, home tile, and sailing barge. Skill tiles, bricks, which represent builders, compasses, which represent architects, and coins, which represent financers. Wooden connectors, black, which represents telecom cables, blue, which represents water pipes, brown, which represents waste pipes, gray, which represents electricity cables, red, which represent underground tunnels, and yellow, which represent gas pipes, keeples, cloth bag, information booklet, and then finally, your rule book. Now let's take a look at the setup. We're gonna be setting this up for a three player game which takes nine steps. Step one, separate location tiles. Separate your location tiles by type. River, arrow one, arrow two, root master, building, and river. Step two, choose a color and get player components. Choose a color and get the corresponding player screen, home tile, and barge. Step three, place river tiles. Place the river tiles in ascending order to the side of the play area. Step four, select player order. The player who most recently visited London goes first, or randomly place barges on the era one river tile. Step five, select and place route master tiles. Select a number of route master tiles equal to two times the number of players and place them face up to the side of the play area. You'll return the remaining to the box. Step six, create supply pools. Separate the connectors and skill tiles and place them to the side of the play area. Step seven, place starting tiles. Place the six arrow one tiles in the center of the play area. Then place a number of building tiles at random based on the number of players. In a two player game, you'll select four random building tiles. In a three player game, you'll select five random building tiles. And in a four to six player game, you'll select six random building tiles. Keep in mind that all tiles placed are placed on their initial side or the ones that have two boxes. Not to be confused with the upgraded side, which only has one box. Step eight, place tiles in buildings. Place the remaining building tiles, era two tiles, and landmark buildings to the side of the play area. Step nine, draw starting keeples. Place the keeples in the cloth bag and then each player will draw 10 and place them behind their player screen. Now let's take a look at the gameplay. A game consists of four eras or rounds. An era or round consists of player turns until all players set sail or move their barge to the next era river tile. A player's turn is taking one of the five possible actions. Bidding for a location tile, generating resources, upgrading a location tile, pass, and set sail. Now let's look at each one of those possible actions in detail. Bid for a location tile. To bid for a location tile, a player places a number of the same color keeples on their side of the location tile hex. To raise a bid, the player must place a greater number of keeples of the same color as the previous bid. Keep in mind that when a player is outbid, they can add more keeples to their bid using the same color keeples behind their player screen on their next turn or on the subsequent turns, they can use the keeples they originally bid, but when doing so, you have to keep the keeples together. So in this case, yellow bid for the location tile, the shard, and bid one blue keeple. If another player wants to up the bid, they're gonna have to bid 
two or more blue keeples, and then at the end of the era, the highest bid will get that location tile. The second action, generate resources. You'll place a keeple on either yours, your opponent's, or a current tile in the center of the play area to gain the resources in the yellow box. If you want to use a tile that was already used, you have to place a number of keeples of the same color, one greater than the previous placement. Keep in mind that white connectors are wild and can be any color. So in this case, blue placed a red keeple to gain the resources in the yellow box, which is a blue connector and a yellow connector, or a water pipe and a gas pipe. When gaining connectors, you want to place them immediately in your burrow. In this case, blue placed both of their connectors on opposite sides of their home location hex. These types of connections can help upgrade tiles or gain victory points at the end of the game based on the tiles. If you gained a skill tile resource, you would place that behind your player screen. The third action, upgrading a location. You would place one or more keeples on a location tile that you want to upgrade, keeping in mind that if it has already been used to generate resources, you would have to match that color and place a number of keeples, one greater. Then you would pay the cost or check the connectors in the arrow on the tile. If you've met all the requirements in the arrow on the tile, then you would flip the tile over. When flipping the tile over, you would place back on the tile the connectors and the keeples. Keep in mind that if you're upgrading a landmark for the second time, you would add the 3D building on top of that tile. So if a player wanted to upgrade their home tile, they would have to have six different colored connectors surrounding that location hex. This is important because upgrading your location tiles will give you more victory points at the end of the game. So if you take the shard location tile, the initial side is worth three victory points at the end of the game. The upgraded side is worth six. And if you upgrade it a second time and add the 3D building, you would get 12 victory points. Action four. Pass. When it is your turn, you can pass. And as long as all players do not pass in a row, you can perform an action on your next turn. If all players pass in a row, then all players are required to set sail, moving their barge to the next era and ending the era. And then the fifth action, set sail. This is your final turn in an era or round. You would place your barge on any open barge spot on the next era tile. This action sets the turn order for the next round. When doing this, the furthest right would go first. And keep in mind that the number of keeples listed above that barge is how many you will draw at the end of the era. And if there is a river hex located above that keeple, you would also gain that river hex tile for your burrow. So our player turns would continue until all of our players have set sail. Once all the players have set sail, we move to the end of an era. The end of an era takes six steps before the next era or final scoring begins. Step one, unused keeples from unsuccessful bids are returned behind the player's screen. Step two, with the rightmost barge going clockwise, players will take the location tile of their successful bids. Keeples from the successful bids are placed back in the bag. Also, Location tiles that were not bidded on are placed back in the box and their keeples go back in the bag. Step three, check for the claiming of a river tile. You'll go to the river tile of the next era where all of the barges have been placed. And if anyone placed a barge under a river hex listed above the keeple, then that player would gain the river tile. So in this case, blue gets the era one river tile. When taking this tile, you would flip it over so that the barges are not showing on the tile. Step four, draw keeples from the bag. You would draw a number of keeples based on the barge's location on the river tile. So in this case, green would draw seven, yellow would draw eight, and blue would draw six. You would place these behind your player screen. Step five, collect any keeples from your own burrow. You would take the keeples off of any of your burrow location tiles and place them back behind your player screen. And then finally, step six, you'll place the location tiles that you won during this era. Keep in mind that the tiles must be adjacent to at least one other tile. And if there are connectors, you would slide it under the connector. And with tiles that have rivers on them, the river portion can only be adjacent to another river portion. Also, keep in mind that rivers do not have to connect to each other in your burrow. Once everyone's placed their location tiles, we would move to starting an era. To start an era, you'll place the next era location tiles based on the chart in the rule book. So to start era two, we will place six era two tiles and five building tiles. 
Then player turns and eras continue until the end of the fourth era. Once you finish the end of the era steps in the fourth era, you would go to the final scoring. This is where you will add up all of your victory points, and the player with the most victory points is the best Burrow developer and wins Key to the City London.